Hey, Madison. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Good to speak to you. Where are you uh, calling from? Um, I'm calling from Billings, Montana. All right. Where are you right now? I am inside my house. Okay. <laughs> On, uh, what, are you, what are you calling from? An iPhone? Yes. Yes, oh, my cool. iPhone. Good. Well, good to meet you. Why don't we, um, like, like we've mentioned, we're doing a multi-part series on the faces and stories of those who were fellows uh, during the 2017 Summer of Defiance for Planned Parenthood. Uh, yeah. Th this will be a publication of Grass Tops, um, published by Grassroots Campaign. So thanks for calling in. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Great. Why don't you start by telling us... Uh, who you are? What's your story? Um. Well, like I said, uh, my name is Madison Yolden. Um, I uh, haven't. This was kind of my first um, intro into the political world and whatnot. Um, I actually kind of found the job by chance on Craigslist, and I've always been interested in doing things like this. I'm becoming an activist, getting involved, um, but just didn't really know where to start. Um, and so when I found this job, um, it kind of got me connected and got me an in. So, but I, uh, I'm a college student. I go back to school in the fall, um, and I'm I'm a single mom of a four year old, and that's kind of mostly the main parts about me and what I'm what I'm doing great how did you feel when you were uh, accepted as a Planned Parenthood fellow um, it, <laughs> I was talking about it all the time to everyone I could um, it just felt really awesome to be a part of something like this um, why you kind of get this idea that a certain kind of person uh, has to be doing this kind of work, um, someone who knows the political field uh, or who um, has a lot of history, who's been doing it for a while. But I'm 20, well, I just turned 24 on Sunday, and they Happy birthday. Totally, thank you. <laughs> they totally, um, they were super excited. They gave me all the tools I needed. Um, there was a training, so they went over stuff and they made it. So it, it reached the people like me who didn't have a lot of experience, but also reached the people who might have come from more experience. Um, so it was just really, it was really cool to see that part and be like, oh, I might not have experience now, but they're teaching me the things I, I need to know to be able to continue this and to get into the activist world and to learn how to stand up for things that I see going on in my community um, here in Billings. So so how did how did you find this opportunity and when you did what inspired you to follow through and and actually apply and, and go through with it um for me it's just it's something that i've planned parenthood has always been um for me i um really come from a place where i could openly talk about um women's health, what I needed to do, a teenager, um, and Planned Parenthood was there for me. Um, and then later on in life, they were there for my sister um, as she entered high school. Uh, and it's always been a safe place. So when this job came along um, and I got an interview and I loved what they were saying and I loved what was um, being said about this whole campaign, um, that really ignited something in me because I knew that I was working for someone who I really cared about and I knew who cared about me. Um, they're very patient oriented. Um, they take a lot of time to get to know the people who walk through those doors, whether it's on the clinical side or on the um, action side. Uh, so it was really awesome to just be able to be working for someone who has been has been working for me. They've constantly um, fought to keep their doors open. They fight for women's health rights. Um, so it was cool to be a part of something that that helps so many people, and that is really important and is something that's needed. Do you remember what they said when they were presenting? What is Summer of Defiance and why it's important to be um, a Planned Parenthood fellow? 
their their most important thing is that they're giving young people the tools to carry out change in their own communities. Um, they're teaching us ways to get involved, how how to reach out to people. Um, you and so that was really the main thing that they wanted to point out is this is something to get you guys started. Um, it starts here, but now you know what to do to take things even farther. And why is that important in a place like Montana? Well, um, in Montana, it is a pretty, pretty red state. Um, and you just don't, I mean, it's a lot of smaller towns. And so basically at the end of the day, it's one of those things where you, you keep to yourself and I'll keep to myself and we'll just, we'll just put it at that. Um, you don't see a lot of, um, a lot of action being taken. You don't see those people getting out there and protesting or you don't see canvassing a lot. Um, I actually didn't know that going door to door was a thing until I started this because no one's ever come to my door. Um, no one's ever knocked doors. I've never seen someone around, um, doing that. So it was, it's really crucial here because there are these things that are going on right now, um, that are extremely important and, the word isn't getting out the, as well as it could be. Um, like I said, people just kind of keep to themselves, and instead of speaking up and standing up, they just tend to kind of hide away. And they have their opinions, but they don't share them. Um, so, so this was really awesome to get involved because I actually saw the community come together. We actually did go out and we found people who supported and then we got those people who supported to come together and we had a rally and we had a town hall. Um, and that was really awesome to see in a community that it just doesn't happen. So did you, what, what did you do, uh, during the summer of defiance? Did you knock on doors? Mm -hmm. Um, yep. We knocked on doors. Uh, we did phone banking. We learned how to use, um, all that stuff. We did a lot of uh, outside canvassing, um, showing up at farmers markets, um, walking around downtown at when there were events going on, um, and then we did get to also um, set up a rally where we sat in front of Senator or we stood in front of Senator uh, Danes's office um, and had a rally for that to get him to vote no on the health care bill. Um, and then when that didn't pass, um, or it did pass, and it went into the repeal and all this, um, we moved from that to thanking Senator Tester, and then we actually got to hold a town hall. And 99% of it was all of us fellows. We were the ones putting in the hours, making the schedules, getting volunteers, um, having one-on-ones with those volunteers to get them to um, really engage in it. And so now... Even though Summer of Defiance has left, um, the Planned Parenthood here has that community to kind of reach out to the volunteers. And we got to do all that. We got to really, we, we had we had our guide, you know, kind of point us in the right direction, but it was, it was all of us. And so we got to walk away saying we brought the community together. You know, we kind of started this and that was incredible. So I imagine when you were, walking up to the first door, your first door ever, uh, <laughs> you, you were probably a, a little bit nervous. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it that. Was, it was a little terrifying. Um, you never know what, I mean, you're walking up to a stranger's door and knocking on it, hoping that they don't freak out and yell at you um, or, you know, slam the door in your face. <laughs> Tell me about that first door. You knocked... What did they say? What did you say? What happened? Right. Uh, pretty much it actually went well. I, I was scared walking up to the door, but we had gone over the script. We had done role play. Um, and so as I was walking up to the door, I did have to keep telling myself, you know what you're doing. You, you've been practicing. This is what you're working for. Um, and it, it, it went okay. I knocked on the door and I talked to the person, um, and they did support and they they signed my thing and. Tell that me, kind of tell me what you said. What did you say? And then what did they say? 
What, um, what was your script? What we did it was I would start out by just saying my name is Madison. Um, I'm a part of the Planned Parenthood Action Fund. Um, and we're here getting um, local supporters on board um, with Planned Parenthood in light of this recent uh, health care bill that's been proposed. Um, and then... I do believe that person actually, it was an older gentleman. Um, he was like 76 and he was like, oh yeah, come right in. Um, let me fill this out. And he <laughs> kind of started going off about, oh, Senator Danes and all this and politics is just out of hand. You, um, the millennials don't do anything. And I'm like, well, that's why I'm here. Um, I'm trying to do something. And he's like, yeah, well, you guys just keep up the fight you keep doing it and you keep working hard. And so it was pretty awesome to uh, see that support and be like, okay, they, he, he really believes in what I'm doing and he's pushing me to uh, continue to do it. Um, so your first door was a man, mm -hmm. an, an elder gentleman. And what was your, so you, you gave your script, um, mm -hmm. you read your script, you spoke, and then what was your ask of, of him? Or, or any of them. Right. Um, for that one, we were actually asking for them to uh, sign a little letter to the editor or a letter to, letter to Senator Danes, um, just stating that we wanted him to vote no. These are his constituents. Um, and he did. He signed the letter uh, and then also signed um, a little volunteer or supporter postcard. So in the future, we have him in our database as a supporter for Planned Parenthood. Um, and he did write, he signed the letter, wrote a little thing for him personally. Um, and that was, that was what we were going around when we were doing door to door was getting those, those letters to give to Danes at our rally. So tell me about, uh, a door you knocked on that didn't go so well. I'm trying to think, um, you know, for the most for the most part, we were knocking on doors who were supporters. Um, I can tell you about a time when we were out canvassing, and um, it didn't go so well. Um, and that was, I had actually just talked to um, a few, a group of women who supported us and whatnot, and kind of jokingly they asked so how many um white men in suits have you gotten to sign this <laughs> and i said well um as of today not many but i thank them for signing we went on to the next one and i i saw these two older gentlemen in suits standing outside kind of near a courthouse and so i just went up and i said hey do you support planned parenthood and um immediately they both kind of went off into a yeah we support them with our tax money all those abortions we pay for um and kind of started going off on this political rant about how they aren't happy. And at that point, I just walk away. Um, we had, I had a lot of experiences like that where they started going off on rants. Um, I had a pregnant lady grab her stomach and say, oh, so you can kill my baby. Um, so it, that does happen. But for me, it takes a lot more to get me really going. Um, and for me, I knew that I was changing their mind, sitting there and arguing with them and trying to completely change their beliefs wasn't going to work. My main focus was finding the people who do support and giving them that voice um, because that's the first step is just finding the people who agree with us and who love to see what we're doing. And then as that progresses, who knows what we can do. How did that all make you feel? There's a lot of emotions. Um, it definitely gave me a sense, um, just as a whole, very empowered. Uh, I haven't ever felt that way. Um, but I got to go home each day knowing that I did something for something I believed in that would make a, a great change. Um, when you do get those negative people... There were some times where I would have to talk to one of one of the coworkers and be like, man, like, I just don't understand how people can be so cut to this idea. There's there's only one thing that they see when they hear Planned Parenthood, and that's abortion. And, yeah, that's a part of it, but 
there's so much more and people just don't want to listen. And so there were a couple of times where I would get really discouraged um, and I'd have to call someone, but we'd talk it through and be like, this is even more of a reason to be here doing this. Um, and so there, there were a lot of emotions, but for the most part, it was a sense of empowerment and a sense of accomplishment that I'm, that I'm really making a difference in the community that I want to make. So you say that you, you've never felt as empowered as you did while you were a fellow for Planned mm-hmm. Parenthood. Is that, is that true? It is. Um, I have always felt very strongly about certain things. Um, my, I, I grew up in a very conservative home, and I've never really seen myself as a conservative. I've always been pretty liberal um, when it comes to stuff uh, politically. But I just, I never knew where to go to have my voice heard. I mean, I would, I would vote, but that's, I mean, a lot of people vote. And yes, that does make a difference. And yes, that's huge. But I always knew that there was more. And so it really was the first time anyone has ever been like, here, I know how you can actually get involved. And that, that does make you feel great. And it did make me feel extremely empowered. And it got me involved in something that, yeah, I've never, I've never had the feelings that I did when I was working as the Summer Defiance Fellow. What's the runner up to that? Has there ever been another time where you felt at least a little bit um, <laughs> empowered or less? What's the close runner up? Um, I guess not politically speaking. Anything. The, the runner up um, would have to be um, when I'm when I'm going to school. Uh, like I said, I'm a single mom of a four year old. When I first started college and I was working and I was going to school and being a mom, um, that would have to be the second runner up. I, you know, you come home and you're like, okay, I'm doing all these things and I'm doing them for me, but I'm also doing them for another human. Um, which again does go with me being a fellow of Summer of Defiance. I wasn't just fighting for me, I was fighting for the next generation. Great. So, Safe to say that this was a life-changing, empowering experience for you. It was. It was. Um, it got me into a whole new world, and now I'm on um, a campaign here uh, that has already started. It goes through September, so it's gotten me the in on other things that I can do in the community that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Great. So how do you think it's changed Montana, or at least Billings. You were working in Billings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how has it changed? How has this summer of defiance changed your community? Yeah. Um, it's really gotten people more aware. Um, you didn't really see Planned Parenthood signs, and now I'm walking downtown, and there's a hot pink Planned Parenthood poster in the in the business, the local business. Um, across the street or I'm driving and they just handed out um, yard signs. So you're seeing yard signs for Planned Parenthood. Um, And then on top of that too, it did allow um, the Billings Planned Parenthood advocacy here. Um, They were able to get a bunch more volunteers that they wouldn't have been able to. They got to, um, find other people to donate and get on board with all that. Um, And so it was really cool to walk away and have volunteers that I connected with on my four weeks be like, hey, I just finished another volunteer. Um, We, like I said, they went and handed out signs. There's um, another event going on um, that they're having here in a few weeks, or it's actually next Tuesday. Um, for Planned Parenthood. So it's just gotten a lot more people engaged. And like I said, I can see all the Planned Parenthood supporters a lot more It's when I'm walking down the street. And that's awesome. That was the whole point. Uh, you did not see that before. 
And so it's been really cool to see all those people come out and feel strong enough to come out because they know that they have this whole group of people who stands with them and, and we all stand in support of Planned Parenthood. How does that make you feel? I would have to say uh, it makes me feel pretty pretty uh, accomplished. Um, it makes me feel really proud of, of my community too. Um, it's incredible. I, I'm born and raised in Billings. Uh, so it just made me really honored to be that person in the community who's reaching out um, and to see those people get on board and to just be able to make those connections with people um, and have open conversations about why they support Planned Parenthood. What's their story? So that was, it was honoring to be able to be a part of that in my community that I grew up in and I was raised in. So what does this all mean for you going forward now? You say you're going to work on a campaign? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have gotten a lot what, more What is the campaign? It is right. for climate change. Um, right now, I don't know if you have heard, but Montana is basically all up in flames with forest fires. Um, and that really affects the farmers. So I'm on a campaign to kind of increase awareness for climate change. Um, which is another thing that people tend to just kind of ignore. Uh, it's fine. It's not affecting us. It's fine, but it is affecting us and it's happening now. And if we don't do something, um, it affects our gen the generations to come. So I'm getting involved in that, which is exciting. And I also have, um, coworkers that I worked with who are sending me, um, November, when in Virginia for their election, come down and volunteer, stuff like that. So I'm able to get involved in places other than just here, too. So you weren't very politically active before the Summer of Defiance. You, you weren't that. Did you, I imagine you voted. Mm-hmm. Um, so you really weren't that civically or politically active, and now it seems like you're at the epicenter of, <laughs> society and community, right? right. Uh, pretty much. That's spot on. Um, and, and as a and single like, mother, what does that mean? How does that make you feel? What? As a, as a single mother, um, how does it make you feel? It makes me feel like I'm doing one thing right. <laughs> um, I, imagine you're I, do, I imagine you're doing two things right. <laughs> At least. Uh, right. I looked hard enough. No, um, it's it's a tough thing to be a single mom and to know that you're raising your daughter right in a world where there is a lot of um, divide and hurt and pain. Um, but if there's one thing I can teach her, I would want it to be that she can fight for what she thinks is right. Um, to be able to, she was at the rally that we had and that was just, absolutely incredible to see my little girl standing by me fighting for something um and so as a single mom fighting um to just show her that she can stand up for herself uh just because it's the norm doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do and if you see a problem find ways to get involved and to do something too and Hopefully she can be doing that at a much younger age, and then who knows what she can do when she grows up. What, what's her name, if you don't mind me asking? Anna Drew. So what does your four weeks of Summer of Defiance mean for Anna in the future? Well, hopefully it means that she'll be um, my little mini activist. Um she'll be able to come home and say, hey, mom, there's something going on at school, and I think we should, we should do something about it. Um, I really hope that this has given, now that it's given me a voice, it will give her a voice. Well, Madison, um, I would say that not only do you, uh, it's great to see that you feel empowered, that you're proud of yourself, and I imagine you not only served as a role model for your community, in Billings, Montana, but also for, for your daughter, Anna. So yeah, that's great. Thank you.
Thank you. So I imagine you you miss some of your fellow fellows. Do you want to say uh, one last message to them? Um, I do. All of all of them have been. They've all, we've all touched each other in like such a deep way. We came together so quick, um, and they're all off doing great things where they're from. So I just wish them the best of luck and to keep fighting because they they're all we're all doing it. We're all doing really awesome and. We just got to keep pushing through. Thank you, Madison, for your leadership and your service and keep being a role model, both at home and, and out there in the community. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. No, thank you. Take care. You too. Bye. <laughs> Bye.